I'm John Helliwell, and I'm interviewing Carrie Albert, who was the pioneer and lead teacher of the iGen program in Saskatoon, which we're proposing as a policy that could be picked up and applied to other people to get the same benefits. What we want to know first, Carrie, is give us just a second on what the program is, and then to what extent you think it has provided benefits to the life satisfaction of the students, of the elders, and of the teachers. Great. Well, iGen is short for intergenerational, and it is a grade six program in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, that sees 25 grade six students learning, working, interacting, creating friendships with elders in long-term care at Sherbrooke Community Centre over the course of their school year. So the students attend school at Sherbrooke Community Centre and we do all of our regular uh, provincial curricular work alongside the elders and the staff and the volunteers that um, call Sherbrooke Community their home. And life satisfaction, how does the iGen program positively benefit uh, people's lives? For the students, we see that when they have a year to practice their communication skills, to sit beside, to listen to, to see the value in people of all ages, they feel like they are doing something to make a better place. Also, because the program is very much student and elder centered, the students uh, provide a lot of leadership and do a lot of the planning with regard to the activities that we do. So the opportunity to be leaders um, is very empowering for the students. And they get a lot of joy and wisdom from their friendships that they create with, with the elders that live at Sherbrooke. And the elder, we call the uh, people that live their elders because they are, by virtue of their life experience, full of knowledge and wisdom that we, we want to learn from. That's why we call them elders. They find the variety and spontaneity that the kids provide really livens up their life, really gives them something exciting to look forward to. They enjoy learning about the kids' interests, their lives, they enjoy their energy, they look forward to the scheduled visits that we create with them because it's a, a time for them to connect with and interact with a friend that reminds them of other times in their life that they've um, had young people around. It's a very reciprocal relationship. So the elders give the students as much as the students give the elders. So we really aim for that uh, throughout the year in our program that it's a giving and receiving of care. As far as as a teacher, I love this work because there are what I call goosebump moments pretty much every day. Goosebump moments are those moments of awe and wonder where you stand back and you look at something really rich and, and a real engagement that's going on between kids and elders and you feel elevated, I guess is the best way that I could describe it. It's very heartwarming and very re rewarding to watch the natural creation and evolution of these intergenerational friendships. Because they are together on the same site, the friendships are very natural and they blossom almost effortlessly, it feels like, because the, the kids and the elders see each other regularly. So they have a natural flow of conversation and um, getting to know one another's names and so on. Also as a teacher, it's exciting to see kids begin the year feeling shy, and then by the end of the year, hear them say, I've grown so much this year, and I don't want to leave. I want to stay and continue what I'm doing here beyond the end of the school year. It's, it's very rewarding as a teacher to have students feel that way. Also, 
I feel that all of us together, our whole community, we feel like we are truly making a difference in the world because we are sharing simple things with each other each day, smile, laughter, and that creates a ripple effect that goes out into our community. So I do feel like all participants are aware of that. And as a teacher, that's very rewarding. I would say that to make a program like this work, you first need a teacher and a school division that is open to looking at having kids embark upon an experience like this with their teacher leading them. So you'd have to have a, a teacher that's willing and the support of the school and the school division. Secondly, you have to have um, a long-term care center or a home, whatever type of, you know, community or environment you're looking at partnering with who are open to having children part of, of the way things work. And then it's a matter of building a relationship between the teacher and management or recreational staff, I would say, at the home. It's not expensive. If, if the school and the school division have staff resources that allow a teacher to do this kind of work with their class, it's not an expensive venture. During this COVID year, we've been using technology, Zoom calls, to mainly over the winter communicate with, with our elders. And we've found creative ways to work around, around that to keep those connections going. Wonderful story, Carrie. Let's drop this pebble in the pond and see what ripples we can make. Thank you so much for doing it. And let's hope it spreads. Thank you, John. Take care.